Ladies and gentlemen, please meet the Vice President of the European Commission, Mara Shevchovic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. And I understood that you have very modern style of uh, presenting the presentation that uh, you hear a lot of them. So we would like to see the people moving and talking to you at the same time. So I will definitely try to do that. At first, I think it's uh, quite impressive to see that uh, logging uh, conference in a good sense took over smart city of Vilnius because you are really everywhere. And uh, to have uh, 6,000 people brainstorming together about the future, about the smart city, is something very, very encouraging uh, to see. Because I think that uh, the common uh, line is uh, that the people are looking the best possible answers on the questions how to innovate, how to modernize, how to energize our society. And this is exactly what I am trying to do with uh, my project for the uh, European Union. We call it energy union, and I said it's much more uh, than uh, the energy uh, focused because it's about modernization and energizing of uh, Europe. Very often when you come to the cities like uh, Vilnius, uh, when you are thinking about uh, the innovation, immediately the second uh, word which comes just right after that uh, is cities. And um, I think it's very natural because what we see today, it's uh, truly the mega trend of uh, accelerated uh, hyper urbanization. If you look how the world looked 200 years ago, at that time only a small fraction of humanity was actually living uh, in uh, the cities. But since 2008, for the first time, we are in the situation when the most of the people is actually living in the cities. And this trend is just accelerating. And uh, we expect that uh, very soon, in 2030, we will have two out of uh, three people uh, living in the cities. And in Europe, this is uh, already the case. Of course, the mass uh, uh, urbanization is uh, bringing a lot of uh, potentials, a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of advantages and opportunities, new culture, new arts, uh, new democratic uh, models of uh, running the, the city uh, affairs. It brings uh, new business models and it creates uh, the, the good basis uh, for the new services. And many of them we just haven't uh, seen um, until really like uh, uh, sometimes just uh, the, the period of few weeks or a few months ago. At the same time, we also have to be honest and we have to recognize that uh, urbanization is also bringing the challenges of unprecedented uh, scale. Let's just look at the levels of the pollution and the congestions we are facing when we want to go into the center of many of our cities. Extreme poverty, crime, but uh, also the, the paradoxical situation that from one side we produce 75% of our wealth in the cities and at the same time, the, the most of extreme poverty is concentrated uh, uh, in the cities. The same go for greenhouse gas and CO2 uh, emissions, because uh, uh, most of them are emitted uh, from the cities, where very often you have heavy industry located, where you have the congested uh, uh, mobility services provided for our citizens. So it has a devastating effects, and it, uh, it's accelerating the, the, the climate change. So what we are going to do about it? The first thing I think we just have to accept that we shouldn't look at uh, this mass uh, urbanization as uh, the problem. We just, have to expect, uh, we just have to accept the fact that this is the new normal. We have to look at uh, this new normal as, as a phenomenon which is bringing a lot of challenges, but at the same time a lot of opportunities, and we have to focus on what good we can do with this, how we can use and reap uh, these uh, uh, opportunities. I think our big luck is that, uh, and I'm sure it's not coincidence, that the fact that mass uh, urbanization is taking place uh, at the same time as uh, we have the first digi 
digital native uh, uh, generation uh, uh, coming out of the universities. They would be new leaders of the smart solution. They would be new representatives uh, of, the, of the smart uh, cities. And they know what does it mean when uh, I'm very often referring to the 21st century economy as an economy which would be really based uh, on the big data. So with the mass urbanization, we also see the interconnectivity. We see hyperconnectivity, and we see how the Internet of Things is really affecting every single aspect uh, of uh, our lives, and uh, that it's creating the opportunities for all of us to ensure that the residents of the smart cities would have high quality of life, and uh, that uh, these new technologies would offer us new ways how to tackle congestions, uh, how to tackle air pollution, and how to tackle all the negative phenomena very often linked uh, with uh, the mass uh, urbanization. When I came to Vilnius and I was looking at uh, the, the progress the city has achieved and about the uh, smart city agenda, I have to say that I very much liked the first principle of the Smart City Charter of Vilnius. If you want to be smart, you need to stop being stupid. I think that it's even a little bit uh, provocative. I'm not sure I could get it through, through the memorandum of the European Commission if we would like to adopt the same kind of document. But it very much reflects the fact that to have uh, city smart, you just don't need uh, the, the digital software. You, shouldn't re rely only on the, on the new fancy apps. You have, to change, uh, uh, the, uh, you have to change the way how you do the business. You have to very often re-engineer the whole business cycles of the administration. You have to train your people. And at first, you also have to involve the citizens uh, in making sure that they like that the city is getting smarter, that they are using uh, these uh, uh, new uh, opportunities, new technologies, and they are helping to modernize uh, the cities by their active involvement. So to put it uh, simple, if you want uh, to live smarter, if you want to live in the smart cities, we need smart citizens. And that's, I think, the key for many aspects because it requires the real change of the mindset, not only of the leaders, but of active, uh, uh, of active um, uh, citizens. And I think it's very important for this period because uh, another mega trend beyond the mass uh, urbanization is the industrial revolution. We are clearly in the midst of it, and I see it uh, every year. What's happening uh, in the field of uh, low carbon transition? What uh, uh, the business leaders are telling me, how because of uh, this new internet of things, they really have to change uh, their business models. How they have to uh, be much more courageous in adopting the new, new technologies and trying to do uh, the, the utmost in reaping the the opportunities uh, which very often are given to those who start first. This first uh, mover uh, advantage. And I think it's uh, very much uh, about the cities, it's very much uh, uh, about uh, the Europe. And I'm very glad that uh, Lithuania is uh, one of the countries which understood it, which started uh, the path of this digital modernization of uh, this um, economic uh, transformation. And I'm also from the new member states. I'm from Slovakia. We joined uh, the European Union together. And I just have to say that it's remarkable to see how much uh, was achieved, how deep uh, transformation is taking place uh, uh, in your country when uh, we bear in mind that all these big changes started only uh, 30 years uh, ago. And uh, therefore, when I... Uh, had the opportunity to talk to the mayor of Vilnius just a couple of minutes ago and uh, uh, to see how the city could uh, uh, inspire other partners in Europe by using digital app for paying for the parking or for using uh, the sharing uh, uh, system for hiring the car or uh, to buy the, the ticket uh, in a bus. And the app which I like the most, which for sure I'm going to recommend it to the mayor of my city of Bratislava, that you can report the pothole in your city. And actually it should be repaired, it should be repaired within two weeks. I found one in front of the building, so I will try the app. And uh, I will see the mayor again, so I will tell him that this test is waiting for him. 
But it's a, it's a great way how to involve the citizens, how to make sure that uh, they see that uh, the Vilnius is uh, their city, that they also have to take care, they have to be interested, they have to be very much uh, uh, involved in, in a good management, uh, in the good management of uh, uh, the cities. I am also, I have to say, very impressed uh, by this new uh, startup culture, uh, which I see in, uh, in Vilnius, that uh, uh, you have hundreds of the new startups. Some of them are becoming uh, very successful, because I think uh, the name Trafi is quite known beyond the borders of Lithuania. Yesterday, I visited uh, the very progressive company BLD, thanks to which I believe very soon we'll be living in the houses where we will not have the uh, tiles on our roofs, but we would have these new high-quality solar panels developed uh, by these companies. And very often it would be not the paint which would be on the walls uh, of our houses, but it would be these intelligent panels which would be not only isolating our houses, but generating electricity for those uh, who are living in these houses or using these administrative buildings. So that's the innovation which is coming from here, from Lithuania. I spoke yesterday uh, to your president, uh, Madame Gribavskaita, and she was telling me how this technology was interesting also for the, the partners uh, in, in Asia because uh, she was coming back from the Malaysian trip. And I can tell you that it's true because I'm also traveling a lot uh, across the world and that Europe has this very positive uh, um, image about the continent uh, which is clean, which is becoming smarter and smarter, which is the more inclusive than any other major economy and where we want to rely on this new green tech, clean tech and provide uh, the solutions uh, for other continents uh, where, unfortunately, until today, the people very often do not have even basic access to the electricity. And we have to bear in mind that we have 1.3 billion people like this, and we have to help them to jump over, to leapfrog over the fossil age, because we know that uh, the planet wouldn't bear another fossil development in uh, the continents like Africa or some countries uh, in, uh, the, uh, in the Asia. So therefore, this new industrial revolution, this Internet of Things is uh, creating new opportunities for the smart minds uh, uh, from all over the Europe. Because if you develop the app, if you produce uh, the new technology, you can use it not only in your town, in your country, you can use it in, uh, in the biggest economy of this planet, which is the European one. And you can use the multipliers to become really a global player. And I think that we have seen the examples uh, of that from your neighbors in Estonia. The Skype became the household name in, uh, for every internet user. Uh, uh, thanks to Netherlands developer, we are very often using TomTom services in our navigation systems. And there are many more examples uh, I could use. And because uh, I know that we are very much uh, under the time pressure, I just like to mention two more things. The first one is that very soon, in a few minutes, we are going to sign the Memorandum of Understanding between the uh, city uh, of Vilnius and the four important cities of Lithuania about how to make sure that the mayors would be cooperating together, collaborating, sharing the best uh, apps, the best uh, services they can offer to their citizens. That uh, we will be working together with this uh, group of mayors on making sure that Lithuania uh, very soon will have something what we call investment platform, through which we can also channel the financial support from Juncker Investment Fund, from the EIB, uh, to achieve the necessary scale for the involvement of such a big bank uh, in uh, the energy efficiency project, in the smartening of the, of the transport, and in bringing, I would say, these new services to the citizens of the cities of uh, Lithuania. And I know that uh, uh, the mayors are very much interested in this, and they would like to make sure that the fertile ground, the good conditions for young people, for smart people, for startups uh, in Lithuania would, would be improved even further. So to conclude, I just would like uh, all the young people to keep in mind just uh, two words. The first one would be there, and the second one would be there and stay here 
in Lithuania, in Europe. You do not need to go to Silicon Valley to develop your new technologies. The Europe is an excellent continent. We are leading economy if it comes uh, to the economic transformation, to the energy transition. And I believe that here we can offer the good conditions and really fertile ground for all smart, sharp minds of Lithuania and other countries in Europe. Thank you very much. I will join you. We still do have a couple of minutes, so uh, maybe we can take uh, a seat. Uh, so, really, thank you. It was a very nice uh, and uh, interesting presentation. And uh, you managed to say quite a lot of things in a very uh, short period of time, I think. So, very well done. Uh, I have a question. Is it your first time in Lithuania or not? No, no, no. I think I was here, I don't know how many times, especially during your presidency. I was uh, here also the uh, last year several times. And, and uh, I think what is quite impressive about uh, uh, our countries, I would say new, new member states, uh, that every time you come with a certain uh, time lag, you see how the countries, how the cities are developing. And, uh, and I know that uh, for the people who are living in the country, in the city, I mean, this change is gradual. So you do not see that change, that uh, development, uh, that sometimes you have to travel abroad to appreciate mm -hmm. how well uh, are things developing, how your city is becoming smarter or more developed uh, when, you, when, you, when you come back home. So, and and, and your, uh, your city and your country is clearly one of the uh, most vibrant and, and fast uh, de developing in Europe, and it's simply nice to see. Thank you. I think for us it's very nice to hear. And uh, speaking of this memorandum that uh, you are going to witness uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, what do you think is its significance not only for the country but for the EU in general? I think um, we, uh, since the, this new commission started, we realized that uh, we need uh, in uh, this uh, economic transformation and in energy uh, uh, transition uh, very strong allies. And uh, when I was in Paris uh, during the negotiations on the Paris Agreement, I realized that uh, the world has really changed. Because it was not only the politicians and diplomats who been negotiated. You had a very strong segment of the business leaders who have been really declaring the intentions for 10, 20, 30 years ahead of time, how they want to decarbonize, how they want to use the new modern technologies. But for me, the, the strongest impression um, uh, which I've got there was the, the enormous enthusiasm of the mayors. Because they are very often the first addresses mm -hmm. if there is a pothole uh, on the street, or uh, if the people are complaining about the air pollution, or if uh, the drivers are unhappy uh, because of the morning traffic uh, congestions, or if the public transport is simply not working well. And, um, in Europe, uh, we started, I would say, the wave, which is now really taking the, the global shape. We create so-called uh, European Covenant of Mayors, mm -hmm. where uh, we have uh, 6,500 uh, mayors uh, from, from Europe. And each mayor had to develop the so-called plan of sustainable development of the city. Mm -hmm. And it was, I would say, so well perceived by our global partners uh, that with Mike Bloomberg, the former mayor of uh, New York, we decided to take this European experience, uh, uh, merge it with other similar uh, organizations, and take it to the global level. So now we have a global covenant of mayors where we have uh, uh, seven and a half uh, thousand cities, big cities, small cities. Despite of uh, uh, that debate in the United States, we have 130 very important American cities who want to continue in this energy transition and economic transformation. And I'm very glad that now we would have this group of uh, uh, Lithuania cities where more than half of Lithuanian population is living, ready to share the information and uh, uh, experience among themselves. But at the same time, I encouraged uh, the mayor of uh, Vilnius to share some of uh, uh, the approaches and apps they develop for enrollment of the kids into the kindergarten mm -hmm. or into the, into the school or this uh, pothole app, into what we created in, in Brussels, one-stop shop for the smart cities, where the mayors can showcase uh, the um, um, new approaches, new solutions, but also where they can look for the partners if, let's say, they would like to do the joint uh, public procurement. So, uh, if you want to uh, renovate uh, the street lightning, or if you want to buy electric buses, it's much easier if several mayors get together because then usually you get a better price, better deal, and I'm very glad that we are starting this in, uh, in uh, Lithuania as well. 
Yeah, absolutely, me too. So I think actually now it's about the time to go and uh, <laughs> witness this. Unfortunately, our time is up, but uh, uh, yeah, really, thank you so much for joining us and uh, enjoy Thank you your for team. having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.